that's what makes him a legend to me. I mean, he, he felt the punches that they were taking. He cared and loved them all. Luis Rodriguez and the great Willie Pastrano and Sugar Ramos and uh, Angelo taught them everything they know. And uh, I love them very much. Muhammad Ali was the, the most special individual that ever came into boxing in every facet. He was just a good kid. This was all in play, believe me. Muhammad, like every human being, he fought. He was an introvert. I told him, you got to talk. Stars have got to talk, because if you don't talk, nobody's going to know who the heck you are. If God is enough to whoop me, I'll kick his feet in the ring. I think he's probably the greatest motivator of all time. Dundee, part coach, part cheerleader, part ring strategist, there for Leonard's most important fights. There'll never be another Muhammad Ali, and uh, you know what? There'll never be another Ray Leonard, there'll never be another... It's going to be hard to duplicate or replicate. It may happen. Who knows? But I don't know if the confluence of all the elements will ever happen again. An era that still continues, albeit those people in that era have age. We remember. We remember. In the sport of boxing, the true measure of a trainer is his ability to understand his fighter and motivate him both mentally and physically. Deep right. We only got three minutes. Yeah. Trainer and cornerman Angelo Dundee has always understood this and became one of the most respected trainers in boxing history. In his career, Angelo guided an unprecedented 15 fighters to world titles. We are his boys. No way! Jose, I'm your boy. His illustrious career as the man behind the champions began with Carmen Basilio in the 1940s, but flourished when he moved to Miami to train a young fighter then named Cassius Clay. How many rounds do you want me to work today? About, about 97 rounds. 97? 97. Ain't too many rounds to work. Dundee helped shape Muhammad Ali's career, allowing his fighter to be himself, but all the while developing many of the creative punching combinations that made Ali famous. He was instrumental in building up another young boxing legend, Sugar Ray Leonard. You're blowing it now, son. You're blowing it. And was behind him for his wins over Tommy Hearns and Marvin Hagler. In 1994, Dundee partnered with a wishful 45-year-old George Foreman, whose future dream was to relive his past. Together, they scored a huge upset victory over then heavyweight champion. Michael Moore. It happened! It happened! Today, Dundee's still as active as ever, training actors toward Oscar nominations and making cameo appearances. His charisma, intuition, and unrivaled dedication to his athletes are what truly set Dundee apart. American story. This is how it happened. They hired a trainer, Angelo Dundee. So they called me. And they asked me how we would work with the kid over the phone. I said, very slow, I said, because the transition from amateur to pro takes time. They like that. So 20 minutes later, they called me. The kid's be down tomorrow. He wants to fight. He came here, a young man, wide-eyed, sparkling, smiling. He's in Miami. He never saw anything like Miami. 
He's with Angelo Dundee and everybody. He never saw anything like the Fifth Street Gym. That was an island of democracy in the middle of all this segregation. Fifth Street Gym. Man, what a gym that was. Go up a flight of steps, rickety. Some fighters would get mad at something, bring a hold into the wall. We covered the holes in the wall with uh, show cards. It was really something to see. It was just a, a grimy working place. It had a feel that you can't get anywhere else except in a boxing gym. What you needed to be in the Vissery Gym was talent to be there, ambition to be somebody, ambition to pay the price, to work hard as hell to be there, and the desire to learn from champions. Because when you went there, you were the champion. If somebody said, round one, they need a middleweight, you can step in there and find yourself fighting the middleweight champion of the world. He might not get silly, but you could. Nice kid. I mean, he, 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 let me tell you, he wanted to be a fighter. He was in, just walking in the gym. He would light it up. He was that kind of young man. And the kid didn't have a car. A lot of times, he would run across the causeway and come to the South, South Beach. One day, the cops stopped him. You know, big, skinny kid running across the highway, you know, helter skelter. So I'm Angelo Dundee's fighter. And then they said, uh, they called me up and said, this, I said, yeah, he is. <laughs> it's a the great fighter. In a career that spanned nearly seven decades, from just after World War II up to the present day, Angelo Dundee trained 15 world champions, including giants such as Ray Leonard, George Foreman, and Carmen Basilio. For his work with just those three fighters, Dundee would rank among boxing's greatest trainers. But nearly from the day they first met in a Louisville hotel in 1959, Dundee would be inextricably linked with another fighter, the fighter of his era, arguably of all time. Together, Angelo Dundee and Muhammad Ali would form the most fruitful partnership in the annals of the sweet science. With Dundee in his corner for nearly 60 fights in more than 20 years, Ali would win the title first from Sonny Liston, then a decade later from George Foreman, and then again from Leon Spinks. Of course, Dundee was no mere observer to Ali's feats. In fight after fight, his quick thinking was one of Ali's most valuable assets. On more than one occasion, Dundee was accused of gamesmanship bordering on cheating. Early in Ali's career, when he was fighting Henry Cooper, Dundee helped rescue his dazed fighter by exaggerating a glove malfunction and illegally administering smelling salts. There were those who claimed the rope-a-dope in Zaire was only made possible by Dundee, who they say loosened the ropes before the fight, a charge Dundee always denied. Whether or not he facilitated the demise of Henry Cooper or George Foreman, it was always clear that Dundee would do virtually anything for his fighter, for Ali. And even as Ali changed names and religions and wives, as he cut off Malcolm X and banished confidants like Bundini Brown, he couldn't let go of Dundee. Dundee once said, Muhammad Ali was the nicest thing that ever happened to my life. A good case can be made that Angelo Dundee was the nicest thing that ever happened to Muhammad Ali. What are you doing out there? Drop the right hand off, come back with that hook. Double hook I want, stick. Come on. You ain't gonna hit nobody with that shot. Forget about it. You don't know what the heck you're doing. Come on, you wanna be somebody? Let the jab go. Why are you gonna be a fighter? You ain't nothing. You're full of it, old man. What do you know about boxing? Cool down, kid. Let's go get a pizza. What's this? It's from the man in the corner. He says you taught him everything he knows. Sometimes nothing brings people together like a nice hot pizza from Pizza Hut.